Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the Horner XL4 HTTP web server and the ability to uh, use our web browser to get information out of the controller and view it either on our desktop, our laptop, our mobile devices or tablets. So it's a very powerful um, uh, thing that we can do with this web server. And the first thing we have to do is um, what we do is we enable our web server, our HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's the protocol that allows the controller to um, uh, serve up information over an Ethernet connection. So as you know, we have our Ethernet connection on the side of our, our uh, controller right here. So it will actually uh, uh, serve a lot of different functions, including you know all of our protocols that we uh, use, as well as um, we can program through that port and we can use this web server. So if we look at the program itself, um, we have to enable the controller so we'll look at our program and the program we're going to use is the same mixing program or process mixer that we used in the last previous couple of examples here. So if we go up to controller and we look, look at hardware configuration or we can go to the project navigator and look at hardware configuration. And under it you'll notice the LAN cable here. We'll go to the configure and where it says HTTP web server we'll enable that. And once we highlight it, we can hit the configure protocol and we can add a username and password. In our case here, we're just going to use supervisor for the username and the password. That way, when someone connects to our system, only those with that password and username can actually connect and, and utilize the and look at the information. So let's cancel that out. So that's what we need to do first. And that's and that's it for the hardware or the configuration itself. The next thing we have to do is what we'll do is we'll actually um, um, modify the program. So what we'll have is we'll uh, take a look at our start stop circuit here in front of me and we will utilize the, um, the start right here as T200 uh, and our stop will be T201. So we just added those two contacts in there along with our F1 and F2 keys. So basically they're mimicking the same thing. And at the bottom of the uh, program, let's scroll down here, and what we have here is when we get the start signal um, from the uh, T200 and our, our start sequence actually starts, then what we'll do is reset that bit again. Same with the stop. As soon as the stop comes on and we don't and the unit stop, then we will reset it. Now, we've also added that you know, when the start signal is started, it automatically will switch to our process screen, which is screen number three, which shows us our tank and the filling of our tank. So that's it. Well, that's all that we'll do. And what we do is transfer that down to the controller. Again, just using this button here, downloads the controller, and then we're off to and running. So what I'll do now is we'll just put that in debug mode so we can watch things happening. And so we've got everything enabled and we have the ability now to uh, look at the data. Now on our previous example what we did was um, use FTP and we will use FTP again in order to transfer what we call uh, HTML code which means hypertext markup language. And that hypertext markup language um, is the ability for us to create our actually website itself or the, the information that we want to display. And the easiest way to do that is there's a website called uh, W3Schools and it actually has a great tutorial on HTML and what it is and how to do it. And if you scroll down, what you'll find is that it actually gives you some examples. But not only that, you can actually hit the try it yourself. It will pop up with a new menu and as you change this, so this is my this is my title page, my first heading. We can just write something else in here. Let's go ACC automation. And once we hit run, you'll see that now we can actually see what our exact display is going to be. 
So this is like an online editor that we can utilize. And if we look at the uh, try, I can actually build up what I want my information to say in here with all the graphics and etc. And this is actually HTML, Hypertext Markup Language code that we actually write and set up. And then we're going to transfer this code into the controller on the memory card. So if we look at the actual code itself on the uh, web server, it uses what they call iframe. And here we go here, tank level. You can see my tank level. Um, and it says iframe, and that says read HTML. So that's what it's going to do, read. It's going to read register uh, 1000. And it's going to be the integer format. And it has a one second update time. The rest of it, the margin, scrolling, width, and height, refer to what it's going to look like on the screen when I when I display it. And the three schools uh, emulation here gives you a rough idea what that's going to look like. So once I have my um, that's that's how you read information. Now writing information. If you see here, we have a mixer start, mixer stop, and that takes the place of what they call a form. So you have form action, and then here we put write htm, and what we're going to write to is temporary bit t two hundred one to stop. My start is right up here t two hundred, and it's a boolean expression. And what we do is the labels are going to be start and stop for the mixer and or for the uh, starting sequence. Now for the stopping sequence, we have stop and start. So it's just the opposite. So these are what's going to be on and then what's going to be off. So it depends on how you actually write your code. So now once we have that, um, what we have to do is save this. And typically all I do is you can grab everything that's in here from the HTML header down to the end tag, which is finish the HTML and right click copy. Then you can go right over to notepad and paste that same code in. Once you paste the same code in, you can save that file and that file name will actually be, uh, we'll call it process HTM. Now, the name that you can only put into the controller is an eight characters, a dot, and three characters. So just remember that you can only uh, use that kind of uh, coding to say what your program is. And no dashes, underlines, stuff like that. So once you have that, then we can take a look at that. And it's right here. So here's my process htm, uh, which is what I've just saved from my notebook or notepad and now what I want to do is I want to transfer that into the actual controller in order to do that we'll just use FTP we've had that set up in a prior so FTP and there's my address I write my password and we just labeled it full access And once we do, then we see it right here. Then it's just a matter of copying this. So we'll just go to the copy and we will go here and we will paste the information. And we'll just say yes to all. And now we have the information in here. And we have a rough idea of what it's going to look like. So what we'll do is call up our web browser. And when we type in the, now we have to be specific with the address, so we'll go right to one the um, eth, or Ethernet address All right, we've assigned to this controller, 192.168.1.131. And we're looking for the, the actual program process.htm. We hit enter. It will come up with our security screen. We'll write supervisor. And password the same, supervisor. And as soon as we hit enter, now what we see is the information on our site and it automatically gets updated as we run the program. So if we hit F1 on our screen, we can see our tank filling up. We can also see that our 
information on our site is actually systems on and we're actually filling the tank we'll also see everything else running our ingredients being added our mixer time and everything's in um, on the display here 0.1 seconds so uh, 10.2 is actually right now so as it runs up we can actually see that display and that's ideally what a the web server is to actually display information that's in that controller that you want out. The other thing that we can do is, like we said, we can actually uh, start and stop this as well. So if I wanted to try to stop it, I can just hit stop and it will actually uh, send a command out to the unit to stop. If we want to start it, we now that our mixer is off, we'll hit start. And this is the problem with sometimes on the web server. Um, you won't get the exact start stop correctly because there's a lot of information being passed. There we go. So now the information is now started. And I can see it going up. And then anytime I can then hit stop. So timing just has to be right. And it will actually stop that unit from um, working which it did there so there's a little bit of quirks uh, uh, with the the information being passed to write but as far as reading it's probably the best thing you can do um, so again we can start it here and stop it and you can see how responsive our controller is so we're actually saying that it's updating every second so it's not too bad at all now all the links and information that you've seen in this video can be um, found on our website. So if you head over there, accautomation.ca, and you can uh, get all that information. Now if you like the video and like to see more, there are three ways you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information on YouTube here. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do that, you'll be given notification of every time we publish new content to the site, and you'll also get a free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing you can do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.